Okay, so we've taken a close look at the GoPro Hero 10, the Hero 10 Media Mod, and we've also put the Insta360 ONE X2 to the test and had a closer look at that too. Now the ultimate question stands, which one should I buy? Which one should you buy? I'll get them both. Well, in this video, we're gonna go for a ride and compare the two as a main POV moto vlogging camera, a multi-angled camera, the dash cam, a standard vlogging camera, the grab frame feature, and we're also gonna see how well they perform at night and how they compare when it comes to exporting, grading, and editing within the app or using third-party video editing software or to help you guys make the right purchase according to your needs and your wants. Much to get through, holy moly, let's, uh, let's do this thing. So to compare, you will notice the difference in physical size. When moto vlogging with the Insta360, you need to make sure the unit is low enough so that it isn't obstructing your vision. To compare, the GoPro usually sits nicely and completely out of your field of view. Don't ride if it's blocking your vision, guys. Holy crap, like, need, do I need to say that? Do I actually need to say that? So this is what the X2 sounds like with the internal mic. So I'm using the Purple Panda mic that's in my helmet. This is how it sounds. I'm assuming it'd sound pretty much the same as how it sounds with the GoPro. Straight out of the Insta360, we're shooting at 5.7K at a max of 30 frames a second in 360 degree mode. So to compare, the footage you're seeing right now is coming from the GoPro Hero 10. I've just got it set on auto, so there's no ND filter, not doing anything special. And I got the Pebble Panda microphone plugged into the media mod. This is how it sounds and how it looks. You'll notice that the image quality isn't as good as the GoPro footage once exported. It's close. Don't get me wrong, it's close, but it's not as good. It just isn't. Shooting in 360 degree mode, the Insta360 allows us to choose from 16 by 9, 9 by 16, or 1 by 1 aspect ratios later in post to make sure your shot looks good on whichever platform you posted. That's the best feature. I love that so, so much. It saves you time, saves you having to do everything all over again. Ooh. Do it once, baby. Once. For multi-angled diversity, the Insta360 takes a cake. It's a no-brainer. Absolutely. Wins. Wins by a mile. Yes, turn this on. Just going to clamp it here. I do love my magic arms. This just allows you to just turn it anywhere you want. That'll do it about there. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, something like that. That's cool. That's cool. And I'm just going to stick it somewhere like this. And we've got pretty much... we got everything. Oh. That's not good. Ah, sweet. Although the Hero shoots a higher quality video, it can only shoot in one direction, whereas because the Insta360 shoots in a 360 degree bubble around the camera, we have numerous amounts of camera angles to play with from that one take. This is a feature that I know I'll be taking advantage of in my future videos. Time efficiency is everything when it comes to filming, and this saves me a heap of time rather than having to set an angle, ride, and set another angle and so on, which leads me to the next comparison. Dash cam. Stick the Insta360 on top of your helmet for a full 360 degree view right around yourself, capturing any incidents that may occur from all angles. You now have yourself an onboard dash cam. You have the peace of mind knowing that if anything should occur, the Insta360 has captured it, and you will have the proof to show the police or the insurance companies. So those rat bags don't get away. Little damn rat bags. Obviously, this is something that the Hero 10 cannot do. Loop recording is available on the Hero 10. However, it isn't a feature that's been made available on the X2 yet. I have received some intel from an Insta360 official that there's gonna be a firmware update in the near future, which will include loop recording. How good's that? Just keep up to date with it. Follow them, subscribe to the newsletter so you can uh, get all the updates. So for now, all you have to do is just clear your memory card before or after every ride. And that's very straightforward and easy to do. Now, when it comes to handheld vlogging with this bad boy, the Insta360 wins with ease. Because you can just walk, you can just point this thing in any direction and just walk with it. And then there are of course different techniques that you can use. So you can just chuck it behind you, around your shoulder. Not even worrying about a thing, man. And this is third person view. Good old third person. And then the invisible selfie stick means that the selfie stick goes invisible, which is like crazy, man. It's just floating. It's a floating camera. Over here, chuck it over here. And so now the GoPro Hero 10, it's directional. So you have to point it where you want to film it. You can't just be all lazy and be like, yeah, man, this is cool. You have to actually point it. And then if I want to go, hey, look, look over there. I've got to flick around this way. Luckily, there's a screen on the back, which is awesome. But now the audio is going all crap. And so then if you make a mistake and if something just happens over there, you're going to miss it. But 
the quality is better on the GoPro. And one other downfall about the Insta360 is it can only shoot 30 frames a second max at 5.7K. With the GoPro Hero 10, you can shoot up to 120 frames in 2.7K. That's incredible. And that also means that you can do this. Pulled a frame using the grab frame feature using both the Quick and Insta360 Studio desktop apps. Then imported them into Lightroom and edited them using my presets, which by the way, are available in my store. Links in the description, there's a free one there for you. Go check it out. Now the GoPro pulls 19.6 megapixel frames from footage. I couldn't find a specific pixel amount from the Insta360, but it shoots at 18.6 megapixels when in dedicated photo mode, as opposed to the GoPro, which shoots at 23 megapixels when in dedicated photo mode. Now you can tell here that the quality isn't as great as the GoPros, but it should still be fine if you're just chucking it up on Instagram. There's small screens, you know what I mean? Everything just gets crunched down anyway. You can't really tell. But you can a little bit. But uh, let's check out the low light comparison. Because we all know action cameras suck in low light. They're getting better. It's a tiny little sensors, man. The light is big. Tiny. It's all dark and stuff, poor little things. Now I'm surprised to say that they actually look pretty similar. For the sake of the video and test, I had the ISO shutter and white balance set to auto. I also use the anti-grain feature when you go to export your Insta360 video. There's a little check, you check that and it gets rid of all the fuzzy grain, all the ISO digital noise and stuff. So that's a cool little thing. But yeah, definitely usable. Just make sure you ride where there's enough light, you know what I mean? If you're gonna be in pitch black, obviously it's not gonna work. Our eyes don't even work. If you're rocking in a tunnel or there's gonna be street lights and stuff like that, yeah, you can use it. Absolutely, you can use it. Editing from your smartphone. The questions you need to ask yourself here is, do you enjoy editing? If yes, then you'll love the endless possibilities that the Insta360 and app provide. And if you need ideas, the shot lab within the app is full of them. If you were shooting in 360 degree mode, then this editing step is a must, as this is where you'll be pointing the camera rather than physically in the real world. Now you need to allow some time to do this. You gotta be patient. Once you're happy with the camera positions, you can color, grade, and export ready for posting on your favorite platform, or sending over to your computer to edit while using your third-party editing software. For GoPro, this process is much faster because you already have your angle and all you need to do is add a grade and then export it. So, you know, there's that balance. If you dig editing, if you like having fun and, you know, checking out all these different angles and everything, the Insta360 is all for you. That's the whole thing. And the Shot Lab is sick. There's so many ideas. I can't, I can't believe how many ideas are out there. I haven't even gone into that depth yet. With the GoPro, you literally just point and shoot and then export and then boom, that's your footage. You all know how GoPros work. Editing from desktop. Once you've transferred your .insv files, that's your 360 degree file, you can import them into the Insta360 Studio desktop app. From here, you can choose your angles much like on the phone app. The only difference is, is that you can't shoot using your viewfinder mode on the desktop app, which sort of is a bummer because that's what I like to use. Fun, it's a real quick way to sort of look around and shoot and make it feel like that it's a handheld camera. Can't do that in the desktop app, obviously, unless you grab your Mac and you're doing these ones. From the desktop app, you can export at 4K instead of 1080p and a much higher bit rate, which by the way, you guys brought to my attention in last week's vid comments, man. You guys just pumped me full of information and I'm so grateful for it. Thank you so much. I'm learning. I just have a camera here and I'm just trying to do what I can with it to help you guys make a decision if you want to buy one of these things or not. So I do really appreciate all the input and all the help from you tech head gurus. I'm just like a noob really. I'm just showing what I can do with it. And heaps of positive comments. I was so happy. There wasn't one negative comment and there's like heaps of them. So thank you so much for that guys. I appreciate it. With GoPro, just plug it in your computer, let the files transfer using GoPro Quick, then import the files into your editing software. Easy. Grading the footage in Final Cut Pro, I found that the dynamic range of the GoPro is better than the X2, which means that the colors and contrast come out looking a little bit better. Not by much. I had to tweak the exposure levels a little to balance it all out, but overall, I think that the Insta360 turned out surprisingly well. When it comes to usability, I found that the X2 is much more reliable than the Hero 10. For example, there are a lot of users that are having overheating issues with the Hero 10. I have had stability issues on multiple locations for reasons unknown. At first, I thought it was from using an ND filter, but it later happened again when I didn't have one attached. Weird. And also on multiple occasions, I've taken 
this thing out. I've hit record, doosh, on my helmet, gone riding for ages, the light's blinking, telling me that it's recording. Go to hit it, and it's frozen. This is literally locked up. I have to pull over, remove the battery to turn it off, put it back in, it's only recorded one second of that entire clip. That happened to me multiple times, which is very, very frustrating. GoPro, get your <laughs> shit together. I never had that issue with the Hero 7. I've like, that's made me want to go back to the Hero 7 now. Anyway, that's for another review later on down the track. The long-term GoPro Hero 10 review. It's gonna be interesting. The biggest issue I've found so far with the Insta360 X2 would be how much the lenses stick out and how easy they are to mark. Just make sure you use the lens covers all the time. There are also a whole bunch of videos on how you can repair your lenses if you do scratch them. People have, again, linked that to me, so thank you if you're one of them. Now, GoPros and Insta360s are complete different machines with different techniques that you can use for each of them. I guess you need to ask yourself what you'll be mainly using these for. Do you rock an action camera for dash cam? For long form moto vlogging content on YouTube? Short form content on TikTok? For photos or just for the lols? Do you enjoy editing or do you rather just shoot and post? These are the questions you need to ask yourself and hopefully this video has helped you decide on which one you would prefer to use. Right now the GoPro Hero 10 can be picked up for retail at around $600 AU and the One X2 usually retails at about $750. But they're having a massive Christmas deal from now until December 14. We can still get 10% off. So you haven't missed out on their Black Friday deal or anything like that. You can still get 10% off this Christmas present. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. What's that Parks and Recreation? Hey, you gotta treat yourself. Plus, if you use my affiliate link, which is in the description below, you'll receive a free gift. Be like sticky lens covers or a free invisible selfie stick, which by the way, works incredibly. And that's ongoing as well. You can use that next year. You can use it the year after and you'll still get free gear. Oh yeah, baby. If you'd like to see a multi-care motorcycle ride that are filmed purely on the One X2, then check out the video right there. Doge, right there. If you would like to learn how I film this bad boy, then check out this video doosh, right there. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm Rob Hamilton. Ride safe, baby. La, 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 la. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Uh, treat yourself. Treat yourself. Gotta treat yourself.